So I recently did a cryptid iceberg video and it was really interesting since it was a niche iceberg so I thought I'd find some more similar ones I could cover. I found this one that has cryptids with only one setting in their history and it isn't too long so this will be kind of a short video. Even though it's short though it has some really interesting entries so stay tuned. Also for anyone unaware a cryptid is basically a creature whose existence isn't confirmed yet. Alright let's get straight into it now with the first entry of tier 1. Flatwoods Monster the legend of a Flatwoods monster, or the Braxton County monster, came from the town of Flatwoods, West Virginia on September 12, 1952. The story began when two brothers, Edward and Fred May, and their friend Tommy Heyer witnessed a bright object crossing the sky and landing on a local farmer's property. They, along with a few adults, including Kathleen May and Eugene Lemon, went to investigate. At the site, they turned their flashlight in the direction and encountered a 10-foot tall figure with a circular hood-like shape around its head a red face with glowing eyes and a dark, armor-like body. They reported it started floating towards them without making any sound. They also reported a sulfurous odor in the air and quickly ran away, which I'd do the exact same if I was in a situation like that. This encounter drew national media attention and sparked debate about the creature's nature and origin. One of the witnesses, Freddie May, reported recurring nightmares and health issues. Ufologist Gray Barker later documented the encounter, bringing it to broader attention. In 2008, the Flatwood Monster Museum was established in Sutton, West Virginia to preserve the history and folklore surrounding the creature. The theories proposed to explain the Flatwoods monster encounter include, for one, obviously an extraterrestrial being, or others think it was a misidentified barn owl illuminated by meteor light, which sounds a bit hard to believe, thinking it was an owl. There are also suggestions that it could have been a prank or attributed to mass hysteria. Despite these theories though, the true nature of the Flatwoods monster still remains a mystery. Giant Congo Snake The Giant Congo Snake, a cryptid rumored to inhabit the depths of Central Africa, is particularly famous for a single claim made by Remy Van Leerde, a Belgian Air Force colonel. During a 1980 interview on the British TV show Mysterious World, hosted by Arthur C. Clarke, Van Leerde recounted his 1959 encounter with a colossal snake while flying over the Katanga province of the then Belgian-occupied Congo. He described the snake as greenish brown with a head resembling a very large horse and a huge triangular jaw. Van Leerde was an experienced pilot and he felt confident in his estimation of the snake's size from the air, stating that the snake was close to 50 feet in length. Van Leerde also managed to actually take a photograph of the creature, but the image being black and white and somewhat grainy didn't really provide proper evidence. Looking at it from a more scientific view though, the largest known snake species in the area is the African rock python which typically grows to over 10 feet and has even been reported to reach lengths to up to 20 feet. This makes Van Leerde's claim of a 50 foot snake really different and obscure and it sounds like straight out of a King Kong movie. A really interesting detail though is that his account is not the only report of a colossal creature in the Congo Basin. The region is also known for tales of Mokele and Bembe which is a more well known cryptid with a lot of sightings being a legendary swap dealing monster said to resemble a long neck sauropod dinosaur. Bathysphere Fish Bathysphera intacta, or commonly referred to as the giant dragonfish, is a species of fish described by biologist William Beebe on September 22, 1932. This description occurred during Beebe's descent to a depth of up to 640 meters off the coast of Bermuda in a device called the bathysphere. The bathysphere, a rounded steel enclosure with a single 15 centimeter wide window, was used by Beebe to observe deep sea life. Since the bathysphere lacked camera equipment, Beebe relayed his observations to artist Elsie Bolsonaro. Who illustrated them for him. Bibi described encountering two fish, each about six feet long resembling barracudas with short heads and constantly open jaws. He noted their bioluminescence with strong pale bluish lights along their bodies. The fish had vertical fins well back on their bodies, long tentacles with luminous tips and were named Bathysphere intacta by Bibi, with intacta meaning untouchable in the context of its submersal. Among the five new fish species Bibi described during his Bathysphere dives, none were actually confirmed to exist. His colleague Otis Barton, who accompanied in the submersal, also claimed to have seen the fish, so there is some credibility there and some people think they're actually plausible cryptids. At the time, the largest known dragonfish was only about 40 centimeters though, significantly smaller than Beebe's descriptions. Ichthyologist Carl Hubbs critiqued the giant dragonfish's plausibility, suggesting Beebe may have seen two dragonfish swimming in succession. Currently, the largest dragonfish species, the obese dragonfish, reaches a maximum length of 55 centimeters which is much less than the length of the fish Bibi reported seeing. Deep Star 4000 Fish The Deep Star 4000 fish, a giant cryptid deep sea fish, was reportedly only seen once by the crew of the Deep Star 4000. 
This device was a submersible that went on a dive in 1966 off the coast of Southern California in the Pacific Ocean. The creature they encountered was said to measure 25 to 40 feet in length, a size comparable to some of the largest known living fish and much larger than any known bony fish. During the encounter, Joe Thompson, who maneuvered the Deep Star 4000 along the San Diego Trough at a depth of 4,000 feet, saw a giant fish swim into view. He described looking darkly into one of its eyes, which he compared to the size of a whole dinner plate. It kind of sounds like a horror scene in a movie when I first read that. As the fish moved on, Thompson observed the silt swirling from the ocean floor. He saw its serrated tail and this made the fish to be nearly 40 feet in length, also noting that the fish had scales. Despite the dramatic nature of this sighting, the Deep Star 4000 fish still remains an unverified cryptid, with the single encounter being the only recorded observation. Abyssal Rainbow Gar The Abyssal Rainbow Gar, another cryptid deep sea fish, was reported only once by naturalist William Beebe during a 1934 bathysphere dive off Bermuda in the Atlantic Ocean. This is a different dive compared to the one we mentioned earlier, since William Beebe made a total of 35 dives in 4 years. Beebe described this fish as being approximately 4 inches in length, with a slender and stiff body and long, sharply pointed jaws. Notably, it displayed a really interesting color pattern, a scarlet head, a light blue body, and a yellow posterior and tail. Beebe observed 4 of these fish swimming together in an almost upright posture at a depth of 2,500 feet, maintaining their upright pose and swimming slowly into the darkness. Beebe referred to the fish as garfish or needlefish, part of the family Bileonde, but admitted this was only a speculative classification. During his observation, he noted that the abyssal rainbow gars were unaffected by the bright lights of the bathysphere, and he saw only a slight fanning with the dorsal fin as they swam. Beebe's description suggests a unique and unexpected pattern and coloration in these creatures, which is believed could not have been visible or useful except in specific lightened conditions. Since this was the only sighting, the lack of additional evidence or sightings to confirm its existence aren't really there. But I feel like ocean creatures that aren't confirmed are the most believable since we still have so much of the ocean left unexplored. Especially in places like the Mariana Trench, we don't really know what lies deep in those depths. Alvin Plesiosaur The Alvin Plesiosaur cryptid represents one of the most debated sightings in deep sea cryptozoology. This unusual encounter took place on July 20th, 1965, involving the deep submerged research vessel Alvin. While the Alvin was engaged in the mission to survey the naval underwater listening array Artemis, the crew experienced a moment that was sparked decades of curiosity and speculation. The Alvin, diving deep into the Atlantic Ocean near the Bahamas, was over a mile beneath the surface when a two-man crew came across an extraordinary sight. They reported seeing a creature that bore a striking resemblance to a plesiosaur. For those who don't know, plesiosaurs were known from fossil records and were large marine reptiles that roamed the oceans in the dinosaur era, but are believed to have gone extinct millions of years ago. The crew's description of the creature was detailed and vivid. They described seeing a thick-bodied animal with prominent flippers, a lengthy neck, and a snake-like head complete with discernible eyes that seemed to gaze directly at them. This observation was made at a depth of about 300 feet, an environment well beyond typical human reach and full of unexplored mysteries. This event was later popularized by famous paranormal author Charles Birlitz in his 1977 book Without a Trace. He recounted the testimony of Captain Marvin Mechmus, who claimed to have seen this plesiosaur-like creature from the Alvin submarine. The description in Birlitz's account further reinforced the extraordinary nature of the sighting. Marvin Marvin the Monster is a cryptid that was introduced to an unusual underwater photograph. This photograph was taken from a film shot during a shell oil drilling operation, either in 1963 or 1966, at a location that's been variously reported as off the coast of Santa Barbara, California, or the Oregon coast. The creature in the image, known as Marvin the Monster, appears to resemble a sea serpent, measuring approximately 15 to 20 feet in length. The photograph shows the creature moving in a distinctive spiraling motion, captured by an underwater camera. It features a rudimentary head with discernible eyes and mouth, and a long, thin tail completing its serpentine appearance. The film clip, which contained this fleeting glimpse of Marvin, generates speculation and curiosity, particularly among those interested in marine cryptids. John Kirk, a notable figure in cryptozoological circles, brought attention to this image from Ivan T. Sanderson's repository. The name Marvin the Monster was assigned to this creature, without any clear reasoning behind the choice of the name. As far as it's known, these still images are the only existing evidence of Marvin, and the whereabouts of the original film are uncertain. The sighting of Marvin the Monster contributes to a larger narrative of mysterious marine creatures, which, in my opinion, seem plausible since we still don't know what's out there. Man-Eating Tree of Nubia The Man-Eating Tree of Nubia, a legendary cryptid, first appeared in literature in the 19th century. Its origin can be traced back to Phil Robinson's 1881 book, Under the Pugna. In this book, Robinson's uncle, 
Peregrine Oriel, a great traveler, recounts his encounter with the man-sucking tree in the central solitude of a Nubian fern forest. This tree reportedly sickened all vegetation in its vicinity and fed on wild beasts, birds, and even humans who came within its reach. It was described as a deadly organism, which you can tell from the name and is typically found in shade-filled clearings surrounded by lush grass with golden fruit hanging from its branches and dew glistening on its leaves. The seemingly harmless appearance is in fact a lethal trap. The tree is said to poison nearby trees ensuring it grows only alone. Its fruit also acts as a lure, drawing animals to their demise. The dew dripping onto the grass below nourishes it, causing it to grow tall and conceal the skeletons of previous victims beneath the tree. When prey approaches, the tree's leaves begin to rustle without any breeze. These leaves are the plant's primary weapons, capable of latching onto victims and sucking their blood. While the manning tree usually preys on wildlife, it doesn't shy away from human victims when available. The tree can consume a man in under a minute, wrapping its long branches around the victim and draining life from the body. Predatory trees are a common theme in cryptobotany, though few are as lethal as a Nubian tree. While carnivorous plants do exist, feeding primarily on insects, the leap from consuming small rodents to a six-foot human is significant and remains within the realm of folklore and mystery. Glowing Mudskipper the Glowing Mudskipper is a mysterious cryptid reported from the Indonesian island of Siram in the Maluku Islands. This unique creature was observed in a river in 1986, and since then it has captured the interest of those fascinated by cryptozoology and bioluminescent organisms. It was described as a small red fish and it resembles other mudskippers with its general size and shape. Mudskippers are a type of goby, known for their amphibious lifestyle allowing them to move and survive both in water and on land. What sets the glowing mudskipper apart though is its striking ability to emit a bright, pulsating red light which is said to be most notable at night. This feature is not known in other mudskipper species, suggesting the glowing mudskipper might represent a new bioluminescent species within the subfamily Oxyodesani. The setting of the glowing mudskipper was made by agriculturist Tyson Hughes in 1986. He observed multiple specimens of this mysterious fish, which stood out because of their unique luminous trait. Unlike typical mudskippers that are usually found in intertidal habitats, these creatures were found in a freshwater environment, adding another layer of intrigue to the discovery. This diversion from the norm added to the mystery of Hughes' discovery, and despite his attempts to capture one of these fish for a closer examination, he was unable to do so. So it's still a fascinating mystery, leaving this sighting as just the only one out there. Lionessie Alright, so to be honest, I'm not too sure why this entry is on the chart since Nessie has had a bunch of sightings on land from what I could find, but we'll still cover it since it's pretty interesting. So basically, the earliest recorded land sighting dates back to 1879, when children saw it near Aldori Cemetery moving down a hillside toward the loch. The public became more aware of these land sightings in 1933, when Mr. and Mrs. George Spicer observed a large gray creature crossing the road near the loch. Described seeing a trunk-like object followed by a large body, which flattened vegetation as it moved. Further sightings include an encounter by Arthur Grant, a veterinary student, who nearly collided with the creature on his motorbike. He noticed a small head, long neck, large body, flippers, and tail. Another sighting by Margaret Munro, a housemaid, involved observing the creature sunning itself on Berlin Bay's shingled beach. It matched descriptions of a grey animal with a long neck, small head, and a large body, just like the other accounts. Even in the 1960s, monster hunter Torkel Macleod sparred it partially submerged near Horseshoe Scree. In 1962, Arthur Coppe heard it near Urquhart Castle, describing it as eating and making sounds. The most recent sighting was in 2009 though, heard and photographed something unusual near the loch. So yeah, you can see how even though we picture Nessie as a marine animal, there's actually been a lot of land sightings too out there. Hedgehog Bear Adam's Hedgehog Bear is a cryptid tale from North American folklore, which came from a singular sighting by Renaud Wilderness Explorer. The creature, allegedly encountered in the rugged mountains of southern Oregon, USA, had bizarre and unique characteristics. The story centers around John Grizzly Adams, a famed mountain man known for his deep connection with and knowledge of American wilderness during the early to mid 19th century. Adams' whole life was filled with remarkable encounters with wildlife, but none as strange as his reported sighting of the hedgehog bear. It was described as a bear with his back and sides all covered in spines like a hedgehog, and would have defied all known categorizations of North American fauna. What makes this tale really interesting though is its credibility from its source. Adams was not just any storyteller, he was a respected outdoors man and an authority on the wilderness and its creatures. His descriptions of the hedgehog bear was so detailed too and conveyed with a sense of conviction linked to mystery and authenticity to the account. However, even though Adams had a high and respected reputation, the lack of additional sightings or physical evidence raised question about the veracity of the encounter. 
There were questions like, was it a case of misidentification, a playful fabrication, or a genuine encounter with an undiscovered species? This unanswered question adds to the mystery of the hedgehog bear. And personally, I think bears are already scary as itself, like grizzly bears, and thinking of a hedgehog bear, that sounds even more scary. Domnitch's pseudo goat. Domnitch's pseudo goat, a cryptid reported in the 1850s, was a really peculiar creature sighted in Fredericksburg, Texas. It was seen by Abe Emmanuel Domnitch, a French missionary known for his detailed accounts of life in the American West. Basically, in the mid 19th century, Domnitch encountered a creature of unusual characteristics in central Texas. He described it as a small mammal, about the size of a domestic cat, with distinctive features that set it apart from the native fauna. The pseudocoat possessed glossy white fur and rose-colored horns similar to a goat. However, its most striking anomaly was its claws, a feature typically not associated with hoofed mammals like goats. He ignored the creature's otherworldly-like appearance, which defied the conventional understanding of local wildlife. And this description was coming from a missionary accustomed to the diverse ecosystems of the region, so it added a layer of credibility and mystery to the account. A really interesting detail found is that around that time, an American officer relayed to Dominich that a Comanche woman, which was a Native American tribe, kept one of these animals and he claimed they were found wild in the woods. It was said that the woman visited the town and that's how Dominich saw it. If all this was actually true, this creature would represent a taxonomic anomaly, meaning it would have really deviated from known mammalian traits. Giant Laundry Room Shrimp So this one is actually really interesting and it centers around the Giant Laundry Room Shrimp a cryptid tale from 1948 and comes from Virginia Staples, a resident of Bermuda in Washington. The story, first published in Strange Magazine, recounts Staples' bizarre encounter in the basement laundry room of her own rundown apartment building. The narrative is not just striking for its unusual creature but also for its setting. It was literally a laundry room. Like no sugar coating, it was just a laundry room. Virginia, while doing her laundry, felt an eerie sense of unease and dread, as if being watched. Upon turning around, she was confronted by a creature standing in a large hole in the basement. Terrified by the sighting, she moved out of her apartment right away and relocated to Seattle. The sighting was initially published in Strange Magazine and has since been subject to a bunch of intrigue and speculation since the story is really interesting in my opinion. The appearance of the creature, described as having spidery thin legs and antennae, resembled a humanoid shrimp or mantis. The sighting has been a matter of interest because of its location in an urban apartment complex and not in a remote area, raising questions about its origin and existence. The area of Vermonton at that time was a busy naval port city, making the presence of such a creature even more mysterious. There's been speculation about the possible origins of this cryptid, ranging it from being an extra-dimensional or extraterrestrial creature. However, these remain speculative and no concrete evidence has been found to support these theories, since it's a singular account. So even though it only had one sighting, it's still a mystery. Giant Ethiopian Lizard the giant Ethiopian lizard is a cryptid tale from Ethiopian Sudanese border region and was brought to public attention through the account of an unidentified big game hunter and taxidermatist. This individual shared his encounter with Adrian Conan Doyle around 1946 during a cruise off East Africa. The story, later included in Doyle's 1952 book Heaven Has Claws, described a singular, unverified sighting of the supposed giant lizard. However, the specific details of the giant Ethiopian lizard encounter within this book are not readily available likely due to the rarity and limited circulation of the publication. The term giant Ethiopian lizard could also be connected to local Ethiopian legends, particularly those surrounding the city of giants in the Harla region. This ancient city, discovered by archaeologists, is believed to be more than a thousand years old, significantly contributing to our understanding of the trade history between East Africa and Asia. The local legend of city of giants, which inspired the archaeological interest in the area, stemmed from the discovery of large stone ruins, leading locals to speculate that only giants could have created such structures. Long Island Sea Serpent The Long Island Sea Serpent is a cryptid legend from northeastern United States. In the 19th century, especially during the 1880s and 1890s, curiosity of sea serpents were at a peak. P.T. Barnum, known for his fascination with the unusual and extraordinary, even offered 20000 for a genuine inspection of a sea serpent, although no such creature was ever presented to him. One of the more dramatic encounters took place in Sea Isle City in May 1886. This event began when 10-year-old Eddie Allen and his sister reported a peculiar creature on the beach described as a small fish with legs, wings, and a single eye. The following day, a group of men from the town, hearing a report of large creature at the inlet, went to investigate. They encountered a massive 150 foot long sea serpent. Described as having a catfish-like head and a V-shaped mouth, a reddish beard, and a transparent patch on his forehead through which the brain was supposedly visible, the creature was said to have wings or fins and three webbed feet. Despite their efforts, including an attempt to shoot the creature, the serpent retreated into the sea. 
The story took an even more bizarre turn with the men encounter smaller versions of the creature, which they believed to be its offspring. One of the smaller creatures was captured and later killed, and its body was reportedly sold. The larger serpent, thought to be the mother, escaped with the other offspring. Though their accounts were met with skepticism, Andrew Ellis, one of the men involved in the Sea Isle City encounter, signed an affidavit attesting to the veracity of their experience. Mount Misery Monster The Mount Misery area in Long Island, New York is known for its haunting legends and cryptid sightings. Among these tales is the account of a large black monster with glowing red eyes. I couldn't really find anything on this entry though, but from the original reddit post, it seems like someone in an old blog post said something about encountering a creature that was large, all black, and had red glowing eyes. It was said that they were chased away by this creature while they were out the woods. But yeah, that's pretty much about it, but it aligns with descriptions of a man-beast or hellhound-like creature, which has been part of the area's lore since as far back as 1653, so maybe it wasn't a single sighting. Back then, local Native Americans reportedly sold the land, believing it to be cursed. They claimed that evil spirits roamed the land, and there were sightings of such creatures with glowing red eyes. Livestream Creature So this entry is about basically a livestream on Facebook. On June 9, 2020, around 1am, a person was livestreaming on Facebook from their home in Fort Pierce, Florida. During the stream, a tall creature described as grayish and appearing to be hopping, ran across the frame, causing him to react with fear. The creature was estimated to be around 11.6 feet, or 3.5 meters tall. Theories about its identity range from a paranormal entity like a ghost, werewolf, or the cryptid known as Dogman, to more mundane explanations such as a tall deer or optical illusions involving shadows or reflections. Community response and analysis include various speculations. For one, the creature might have been a reflection on the glass, the video quality and camera's difficulty in imagining dim objects moving quickly could have contributed to appearance, the timing and circumstances of its sighting led to suspicion of it being coincidental or possibly pre-planned, or the creature's appearance might have been caused by smoke or headlight play. Pyramid Lake Koala Camp So this last entry, I couldn't really find anything for either, but again, referring to the original post, a user allegedly found a large dead fish on a shore off Pyramid Lake. It was later identified by the person as a coelacant, and how it got to a place is a mystery since it's a freshwater lake. But yeah, that's pretty much all I could find on that entry, and that concludes the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed, and let me know if I should make more cryptid iceberg videos. Anyways, thank you for watching, and hope you have a good day. Bye.